Hi, I'm Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. On this podcast, I share my experience, strength, and hope from recovery. I don't support or endorse any particular 12-Step Recovery Fellowship, and I don't claim to speak for any of them either. My hope is that you will find my words helpful in some way, whether you're in recovery or not. This is episode 84, Don't Carpet the World. I got the title of this podcast from a Chinese proverb that I heard years ago, which is, it's easier to put slippers on your feet than to carpet the world. I thought I knew what that proverb meant way back then. And I guess intellectually, of course, I understand what the words mean. But in reality, I didn't really get it until I was in recovery. Recovery taught me that a lot of what I was doing was trying to control other people, either in my own mind or in reality. But before I get into the topic in general, I want to let you know that I will be piloting a group coaching program in January called Six Weeks to Better Boundaries with Barb. And this group coaching program is for you if you feel guilt and shame when you try to set boundaries or you set boundaries, but then you immediately take them back. You're tired of being taken advantage of. You feel disrespected and dismissed by other people. You're afraid of what other people might think if you, whatever, fill in the blank. You're constantly going against your own values and not living your life in a way that makes you proud. I'll put a link in the on the page with the show notes where you can get more details and claim your spot in the program. Just a word of caution, though, since this episode's topic is really about control and trying to control other people, I just want to remind you that setting boundaries is not a way to control other people. I've met a lot of people who think that's what they're for. They're not. They're for you. And they're so that you can live your best life, not so you can control other people. Because by the way, you can't control other people. An example of me trying to control others was my people pleasing behavior. I was trying to control how other people thought of me. I was trying to get them to think I was nice and kind and helpful and smart and all kinds of wonderful things like that. And the result was me feeling rather fragmented because I had all these different facades up. Another example of my controlling ways was I was also trying to control traffic. That's in my mind. (laughs) I've talked about this many times on the podcast. Traffic was one area of my life where it was really evident that I was not doing well. I'd get really pissed off that there was traffic and I'd get pissed off at other drivers And the control issue here is that I had this idea that if only things went my way, that is no traffic while I'm driving, then everything would be okay. Like I know better than all the civil engineers about traffic flow and high rate construction. My therapist helped me to see that one of the reasons I got pissed off way out of proportion while driving was because it served as a kind of safety valve for me. I didn't share what was really going on with me with other people. And so when all of my like tension and disturbance, et cetera, would bubble up and spew over while I was in the car by myself. And this happened, especially when I was alone. I was definitely a jerk while driving when there were other people in the car, but it was magnified when I was alone. What I was doing was taking all the feelings I was holding inside and letting them go when I was in the car. The reason that traffic brought this up was because I had this idea that the road should not be packed with cars and also things like nobody should ever pull out in front of me or anything like that. Despite the fact that I know I have pulled out in front of other people from time to time, accidentally, of course. And of course, that's going to happen to me and everyone else from time to time. But I took it personally as if they were doing it to me. And of course, there are lots of cars on the highway because the highway was built for traffic. 
So if we use this metaphor of putting slippers on our feet rather than carpeting the world, what that means is that rather than trying to lay carpet over the entire world, what I mean by that is trying to control the entire world and everybody in it, we need to put slippers on our feet. When we extend the metaphor to us trying to be controlling, think of it like this. The world has jagged edges and places where you can get cut and scraped. So yeah, you could put a nice cushy carpet over the entire world to cover those sharp edges, or you could put slippers on your feet to protect your feet from the sharp edges. Now, if you think about the amount of energy that it would that would be involved if you were to try to carpet the entire world, it sounds insane. Like how much labor would that be? How many resources would it be? And how fucking exhausting would that be? And it would never be possible. But that's a metaphor for what we're trying to do when we try to control other people and the world. We're trying to make things work for us as if we know better than God how the world should be. I've been told in recovery, if I'm disturbed, there's something wrong with me. Now, what I've come to realize, that doesn't mean nobody did anything. But what it does mean is that if I want to be undisturbed, then it's up to me to figure out how to make that happen. It is not up to other people. In other words, I have to put slippers on my feet rather than carpet the world. It's my job to worry about my feet. The thing is, when we go to put slippers on our feet, We all might want a different kind of slipper. Some people might want the ones that have the hard soles on the bottom, so they're kind of like shoes, and some people want them to be like booties that go on their ankles, and others want them to be more like clogs where you just sort of slide your foot in, and some people want their slippers to be like socks. If you're putting slippers on your own feet rather than carpeting the whole world, you get to pick the exact kind of slipper you want And you don't have to worry about whether other people are going to like the style of carpet you picked if you were to try to carpet the entire world. If we were to extend the metaphor a bit more, we might say that if you grew up in a dysfunctional family like I did, you were trained to carpet the entire world rather than put slippers on your feet. My family didn't even know that slippers existed. In fact, if they discovered that slippers existed, they probably would think they had to make their own slippers from scratch. Also, that everybody had to wear the exact same kind of slippers that they got to pick. Whereas, recovery has taught me that slippers exist and I don't have to make them. I'm going to buy mine online and have them delivered right to my door. I'm not going to make my own slippers or even go to the store to get them because I've realized I don't have to work so fucking hard just to be in the world. Now, if the world is rocky and has jagged edges, then I need to put slippers on my feet rather than carpet the world. So if you have been trying to control the entire world around you by getting people to see things your way or do things your way, try to put down the carpet laying tools, set them aside and put slippers on your feet. So what are the slippers we might put on our feet? What is it I need to do to manage the world? A good example is this. I used to get pissed off that people kept texting me when I didn't want them to. I'd resent them for texting me late at night or early in the morning or when I was busy. And then I realized, oh, I'm trying to carpet the world by getting everybody to not text me at certain times. Putting slippers on my feet in this case means I turn my ringer off. That means I'm not trying to control other people. I'm controlling me. I don't have to get notified all the time by the phone, text messages, or any other app. I can turn the ringer off and I can turn notifications off. By the way, you can do this too. (laughs) 
I think of this as me becoming an actor rather than a reactor in my life. Here's another example. I have a family member who talks politics constantly. And we do agree politically, but I just don't get involved in politics anymore. I don't pay attention to the news. I don't pay attention to current events because it's not good for my mental health. And I've asked that person a number of times not to talk politics with me because it's just not something I'm interested in discussing. And I realized after about the fifth time that this person is literally incapable of not talking about politics. So I could try to carpet the world. That is, I could try to get this person to force this person to stop talking about politics, which they're basically not going to do. So the way I've handled it, the slippers I put on my feet is that I now spend very little time with that person. The maximum window of time I can spend with them is about 90 minutes. After that, I got to go because I just can't tolerate it anymore. I've made the choice to put the slippers on my feet rather than carpet the world. I've tried, I've decided to change things on my end rather than control others because I've learned to accept the things I cannot change. I've gotten the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. So go my friends and order your slippers lay down the carpet laying tools, you'll be amazed at the enormous amount of energy you will have once you stop trying to control other people, once you stop trying to carpet the world and just put on a nice pair of cushy slippers. Talk to you next week. That's it for today. Please share this episode with anyone who might find it helpful. If you like what you've heard here, you might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, then head on over to barbchat.net or you can get on my calendar for a free 20-minute consultation to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, then go to barbchat.net and get on my calendar. I'd love to chat with you. Please like and subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast outlet. This helps other people find me. Thanks for listening.